Shut up and sit down. Hi right, guys, I'm Dodge. This is Big Mac's workshop and paint studio. A uh, bit of a different one today. Uh, green stuffing, Fallout 4 armor, or just Fallout armor, the metal armor, uh, which was requested for by Grot Grottanski um, a long time ago, and we just never got around to it. If you're just watching this because you want to see the green stuff video and you've not played Fallout, here's an image of the Fallout armor we're going to attempt to be making on this Ogryn. Uh, you can also use this for your orcs and other stuff, but personally I'm scaling up my orc army, um, so my bigger characters are all going to be Ogryn sized. Um, it's actually quite simple once you've, you've done the trial and error for this video, um, or for this particular build. And you'll find me a lot in this video using a Stanley knife blade rather than a hobby knife blade. And that right there is one of the reasons. It's uh, long, it's sharp. Um, once you push that down and pull that up, if you pull away from the opposite side, you get a nice clean cut, which is really good for making hard edges on armor. And I've started off with uh, his groin protection. I'm not sure what bit that would be called. But I thought that'd be a good place to start, using his belt and his stomach as a, a guideline. Uh, to size up all the rest of the armor. See, I'm just cutting that down. I mean, all I've all I've done to flatten that green stuff out is put it on that cling film base you can see there, or shrink wrap is probably what you call it in America. Um, make sure that's wet so it doesn't stick. Rub it with your finger down, and then make sure you've got no fingerprints on it. But what I tend to do is I flip it the other way around so you've got a, you can't have any fing fingerprints on it because um, it, the smooth surface. At the moment I'm just scoring in some lines for the detail work of the metallic parts. Although I wasn't really happy with this by the end of it. Also guys, this is only going to be part 1. Part 2 is coming out. There was a lot for me to do. Working with this much green stuff in a video, um, I tend to leave it to dry for a while. It's so easy to put your finger in it while working with something else and then you know, you've know you messed up everything that you've already done. So it's better to do a, do a bit uh, so you can't really handle it very well anymore and then uh, let that set fully. I'm using the back of the belt there um, to give me something to push the green stuff down to and bond to. And all this is, is a very thin sausage of green stuff um, just snaking around the belt buckle and that's how we're going to make the belt buckle and then just snip it off with your hobby tool. It's a very quick and easy way of making something that resembles a belt buckle. Everything I do in these green stuff videos is done in steps because um, I'm not I'm not a master sculptor, guys. Um, I can get by, I can make make things and fiddle around with green stuff. And you guys keep asking for these videos, so I'm going to keep making them. Also, the other good thing about the Stanley knife blade there is I can squash the whole thing down with that. It's also metal, so it will rust when it gets wet, but it's stainless steel, so it doesn't rust really. Not much, and they're cheap, so you can throw them away and uh, get another one. As you can see, um, same technique again, but you push this forward and back, not left and right, um, then just peel that away. As long as you can see the blade through the green stuff from the underneath, it would be you'd be able to pull most of that away and get a nice sharp edge. What we're doing here is making a strand and we're going to use that for the belt by feeding it into where the belt buckle is. And then just pulling it all the way around. It doesn't go all the way around because we're going to make some little ammo pouches or little utility pouches on the side of this belt. And uh, to make that blend in, I'm just going to push it through and around the belt buckle with a sculpting tool. Just gently, you don't want to stretch it too much. Uh, it does really warp what you're doing. You just blend it in ever so slightly, pushing down gently, giving it some grip to what you're working with. Now the actual metal chest armor it's relatively easy to do, but it is made of layers, so I decided I'd build this up in layers as well. Starting with a... This is just a undercoat sort of piece. Now, what I can see in the image is there's a bit of leather or something underneath this, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's what it looks like to hold it on. So that's what I'm making here, and this is also going to flatten the chest out, which is going to give me a nice work surface when I'm trying to sculpt things over the top. There's not going to be any dips on the underneath, so I don't have to worry about pushing too hard with a sculpting tool and a... Uh, misshaping what I'm doing because the underneath of it isn't sturdy enough or doesn't have a nice surface to uh, work with. But now that's set, I'm going to start uh, wetting down my uh, what I call a palette again I guess. Uh, really handy, just get a bit of cardboard, wrap it in cling film guys, it stops your green stuff sticking to everything. 
I'm going to start cutting that down again. And the first step is to build the two bottom parts of the torso armour. Um, I'll throw in another image there so you can see what I mean. We're going to put those two in first and we're actually going to build those as two separate parts. That way we get a real solid gap in between them both or like um, a groove that looks really deep because I'm assuming it would be seeing as the entire armor is just scrap metal all bolted together. It takes a while trial and error trying to get the right size but uh, about a third of his torso should do it. Then before we start doing anything else we're going to want to bond that to the uh, back bit of green stuff there. Just push that down. You always push it down on a bit you're either going to cover up or you're not going to see when you're finished uh, or you're not going to see because you put something else over it. Now the shoulder pads were relatively easy. Again I'm just making these very thin pieces of green stuff, layering them over, feeding them on, making sure they're wet on the side that I'm touching so they bond to the uh, shoulder. And we're going to start making the shoulder pads. All I really need to do here is a score round with the Stanley blade to get a sort of round shaped edge. As there's a multiple layers to the shoulder armour. One of the main problems I have why sculpting this and making this video is anyone who's watching it and has played Fallout knows exactly what it's supposed to look like so any mistake I make it's just going to show up. Um, and this is a really simple way of making ammo pouches. As you can see, I've got a, a rectangle bit of green stuff here. I'm going to squash down the top third so it's um, half the thickness of the bottom half. I mean, this is really, really simple. Once I'd figured this out, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to use this on everything. Once you peel that off, since that's only half the thickness of the other part, you can fold it over itself and onto the bottom half and it will look like a satchel, it will have that sort of shape to it. Because if you tried to fold it when it was the same thickness it would just look like you've folded over a bit of green stuff whereas the different thicknesses of the material make it look a lot better. And as you can see that was a uh, very simple to do. And we now have a tiny satchel. Andy's amusing himself in the other room laughing at the tiny satchel and as you can see I've just glued those on there. Really simple stuff. Uh, we'll probably add some more of those details later on in part 2. At the moment we're just going to make the core of the uh, model. And we will be doing a painting tutorial for this one as well, seeing as that's what was actually asked for by uh, Grotansky, Grotansky. And, um, I just thought I'd do a green stuff video for it as well, seeing as I had to make some of the Fallout armor. I could have used the original Ogryn armor, but um, that wouldn't have been as cool as trying to make something Fallout based in the 40k universe. Now what I'm trying to make is the top part of the torso. Now this is having all the grooves and lines put into the shape beforehand. One of the problems I found with doing trying to build this torso is because the Ogryn's proportion is not the same as a human being the armor looks off. There should be a part that sticks up from the torso under his chin and you just simply can't do that with an Ogryn because uh, his head comes forward out of his body rather than up. This is sort of a uh, C shape and as you can see same sort of technique, using that Stanley knife blade to uh, whittle away the bits of green stuff I don't need. Layering that over the bottom two pieces of green stuff that are supposed to be metal. So uh, over those and you definitely want those showing through as they're part of the feature. Then I start feeding this under his neck and as you can see the proportion of his um, body armor is accurate but uh, there's no way I could have put that extra part uh, where his head was so that's a bit of a shame. Maybe when you have a go at this, you can uh, figure that one out. And if you do, let us know. Now, the metal shoulder pad on the left ends up being different to the one on the right. Uh, to be honest, it's because I screwed it up. But this is a very difficult shape to make, so all I'm using here is a bit of a uh, two 
two millimeter plastic card in a rectangle and cutting off two of the corners on the same side. We're going to use that as the main basis for the. They're going to line up, sorry, with the under piece of armor, uh, the same angle, and then we're going to cut a 45 degree angle, sort of, from the center back to those grooves. And you can see the shape yourself. It's really hard for me to describe it. And, and that, when it's folded over, is going to give the impression that the center of that has a bit of a point to it, like the armor does in Fallout. And we're just going to repeat the process on both sides, and now we have something something resembling the underneath of that metal shoulder pad. I messed up the other shoulder pad and pulled it off, uh, which isn't really a drama. It just it made me rethink everything, and I thought, you know, I will do a spiky metal armor piece because I always like the look of those, even though they're um, I think medium armor, but they look cool. I decided to put an extra strap over the uh, armor there, he's already got one strap, that was just built into the model anyway, so if I do another strap and push it under the chest plate armor, it's going to look like he's got something holding that armor in place, which is uh, exactly what we're going for. So I used the same technique again with a Stanley knife blade and flattened it out, and basically I'm just going to poke that into place, making sure it's the same width as the uh, other leather strap at the other side of the ogrin. For the spikes, I'm going to be really lazy and just use the points from cocktail sticks. Um, if you've got anything better, like maybe some spikes from some 40k stuff you've got, you could use those. Really use what you want. But these were to hand, because we always have these on our desks. Because they come in handy for everything. And the actual metal armor with the spikes is relatively simple. Um, it's all quite simple actually looking back at it, it's the uh, trial and error step that I have to go through while making these videos, that's the uh, difficult and time consuming part. Now we're going to go for a sort of thin material again, not a full metal material, so this as you can see is really thin, but uh, it's going to act like look like a padding, a lot of this is going to come down to painting, how I paint each of these layers, and this is going to be quite round. And then we're going to layer up on top of that in a minute with a, uh, another layer that looks more like the armor. The other reason is that you can't put those cocktail sticks into a layer that's that thin. And also it gives me a nice surface to work with with this next top layer as well. As you can see that's quite a lot bigger but uh, we're going to squash that down and start rounding it off just with our fingers. That'll be the easiest way to sculpt that probably. Now you don't have to put your cocktail sticks in immediately, what you could do is get that really smooth then use a drill once it's dried, drill into it and then put your cocktail sticks in which would in fact give a better result but hindsight's a bitch innit. Always know what I should have done when I've finished. Because when you put them in like this you will distort the green stuff. I have put enough green stuff on there for it not to distort too much but for a better result Definitely wait for that to dry and then use your uh, drill bit for pinning and stuff like that. So we're really getting somewhere now, we're starting to look like this Ogryn has metal armour. There's still a long way to go on him. Um, this shoulder pad, unfortunately because I'm using white plastic card, doesn't show up very well. And this is a very small diameter piece of circle plastic card, that's cylindrical I should say. We're going to cut the end off of that in a second and put that on top of the plastic card shoulder pad. Unfortunately I'm not going to have time, I don't think, by the end of this video to finish the entire back armor. But there's a part 2 coming very soon as is uh, on the desk drying. If you don't have the plastic card for this you can just use a... Uh, lollipop stick or something like that. You only really need a very thin part or even if you've got a 40k part that uh, looks like a little round piece of metal you could just stick that on. That's all we really need for that. We're also going to start building up the uh, shape of that by adding this plastic card here is the same material I used for the shoulder pad itself so it's the same thickness except we're going to put it sideways but to make that look right, we're going to have to put a 45 degree angle cut at the bottom so it still looks pointy when we put it on the shoulder pad. 
And don't forget to sand off your edges ever so slightly. And we're going to pop that along the side there. It's going to give it more definition. We're also going to run a little bit, a few more bits of plastic card along the side of that, so we don't have this boring flat surface. Just measuring that up and then just snapping that off. This is a extremely thin plastic card stuff. If you haven't got this, just find some uh, cable or even a paper clip uh, would do it. And we're just going to glue those along the edges there. Just breaking up that shape and uh, making it all look more three-dimensional and more like armor that's been hammered together. As you can see, once I've bolted those on, it's starting to look the uh, way it should. I put some green stuff over the top um, to cover up the tatty edges, just to add that extra shape that it needed. I haven't got time to do the back in this video, but we'll be doing the back. We may do the legs. I need to know what weapons I should build for this, guys, if you've got any ideas. And obviously, as per usual, we've got some special thank yous to everyone, uh, all of our patrons here. We've got Joe Spearpoint, Rob Paints Models, Warren Brunston, and Ludwig Hofball. You guys are awesome. Thanks for supporting the channel. And don't forget to check out the outpost as well, guys. Uh, affiliate link in the description for cheap hobby stuff. Uh, besides that, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for part two. Hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.